Remember when we used to play in the woods together? I got lost that one summer. When I turned around, you were gone. Congratulations on an incredibly beautiful, moving, hallucinogenic, hypnotic film. It's your first film, which is no small feat. So I want to know how how this started. What drew you to a story about grief and, and beauty? Um, first of all, I was going to say I was a little nervous to use this microphone, but now I feel okay about it. <laughs> uh, I just had to get that off my chest. Just in case anybody's reading into uh, your... Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting because Laura and I grew up in Santa Cruz, uh, a small town called Aptos, and we grew up on the edge of an old growth redwood forest and spent most of our childhood kind of playing it. To keep in mind, our father is a mycologist, a mushroom expert, so we were around a lot of nature. And um, so cool. So he, does he like forage for different kinds of mushrooms? Yeah, he's f foraged for lots of different mushrooms, and he was a, um, he has, I think, different kind of... It's really interesting because I didn't understand it so much growing up, but later on I realized, oh, we had a very unique childhood. Um, but we grew up in this special kind of magic landscape, and where we actually shot the film is in Humboldt County, which is further north, and where the trees get really big. To put in perspective, they can be as big or bigger than the Statue of Liberty. They're the largest living organisms on the planet. So they're kind of awe-inspiring, I would say. So to make a long story short, when we first started conceptualizing the idea of this movie, we really started with the basic, I think, kind of feeling of wanting to bring, I think, the magic of these trees to life. Or I think Laura says it kind of better than me. I think the feeling that they inspire in terms of... Well, you, the beauty of it is that they're so awe-inspiring, but they're huge. And you, you realize you have a great perspective about your your mortality and who you are as a human being, you're so small. So having that perspective kind of allows you to have a, you know, some free moments to say, I'm not as big as important as I think I am. And that feeling we wanted to capture in a story, I think to express their beauty and then also the destruction of the landscape, which, you know, over the last 150 years, 95% um, of the, the old growth trees in California were cut down. So what's left if you go to Northern California and visit the redwoods? Um, they're protected for us at this point, and it's about 5% of them. Hence, they're thousands of years old. So the idea was to capture the feeling of this, which many people like John Steinbeck as a writer, um, Ansel Adams as a photographer all said, you know, these are impossible trees to capture. And I think it's because there's a feeling that happens when you're standing near one. They have energy and they breathe and they make noise. So the idea was to tell a poetic story that could, you know, be emotional and make you kind of live in a magical realm in some level. 
And you said that, uh, excuse me, you said that Ansel Adams had said that these trees are impossible to capture. And that's kind of what I'm fascinated about because you captured something in this film, but I'm wondering if you feel like what you captured was what you intended to capture when you set out to film these trees. Because oftentimes you look at something, you say, oh, I want to film this, and then you get a camera and you're like, none of these lenses capture what my eye was made me feel while I looked at this thing. Well, that that's what we say is like the human hand where you come in and you have an artistic... Um, viewpoint and you say this is what they make me feel that's where Teresa came from Teresa was born out of this that's Kirsten's character sorry um, she's born out of this landscape and um, her mental journey in landscape is what we captured so it's her understanding of her of her world that we showcased in the film we didn't want to just say here's a tree let's shoot it we would want to imbue some meaning on it because that artistic, um, what would you say it when you... Oh, we said that it yeah. would take an, an artistic intervention. intervention that yeah. We wouldn't want to go in and just kind of portray it um, without... I think, you know, there's subjectivity, not only through our eyes, I think through the eyes of the character, you know, and I think that's where the idea of having the stream of conscious journey really actually came about was because we knew that in order to capture, I think some of the existential questions that we felt like we were going to explore in this film, that we would have to do something that felt more emotive and less about, it's not really about what's real. I think the reality is defined through her character in the film. And so the trees are defined that way. Um, and so they're imbued with the meaning that we kind of, I, I guess, from your character, and that changes how you see them. Did you shoot it chronologically? No. Mm -mm. That's so interesting. We, we started in the house... Two weeks from the house, right? And then we went into the, the woods and other locations. That would make sense, actually, because you are kind of going back and forth. It would be hard to do chronologically. But there is a sense of your character's journey, which is all inner monologue, that we're, for the most part, just sort of reading by expression and by really minor things that, that, that you're doing. Uh, it seems like that would be something that is easier to capture chronologically. How did you sort of uh, map the path for you as, a, as an actress in each scene? Well, for me, the, with the work that I do for, for every character I do, but this one I got to live with for a longer period of time, and also because I knew Lauren Kay for so long, there was already an emotional safety net of just being friends that, that you know, if you're working with your best friends, you're just all in it together in such a deeper way that I've never experienced before. And um, for me, I do a lot of like dream work and it feels like therapy between me and the character. And I, I just have you know, all of my notes so I know exactly where my character is at a certain point. In general, like with all characters, you do a kind of dream work? I do, yeah. Do I use a lot of subconscious, like a lot of different types of things depending on the role. With this, I, I had someone just read me because Laura and Kate's script was, was, it was so detailed. So I'd have someone read it to me, and whatever I thought of, I, I would just say it, and you know, she'd write it down for me. Like, funny things, too. Like, I remember she was talking about, I'm, I'm putting this uh, cannabis, uh, like kind of a poison into the weed, and, and I thought about cotton candy. So when I twirled it, I, I thought about cotton candy. So it's like, you kind of just, you use your own. And we use sense. that. That's the take yeah. of it. We used, we, we shot that. It's an important kind of moment in the film because she's making a really big decision or we'll find out that it's one. But that's um, just an easy, accessible thing to explain. The other things are like deeper and more, you know, complicated, well, but. She, it was really interesting because the dream stuff that she was doing lends itself to this film because it's essentially you're in almost a dream state. And, but the question you're asking for me is interesting to think about her in terms of acting because it's such a nuanced performance because we're essentially asking her to communicate so much without saying it. And so not only is that, I think for an actor, you know, such an emotional journey because you really have to access something. It's also a real physical journey because depending, you know, it could be the most you know, for example, the cotton candy thing is a great thing, thing to talk about because when Kirsten had that idea, there's a way that she kind of like shakes, you know, she shakes the, the pot or the pack, you know, and it's hard to say till you see it, but I remember thinking at the time, I knew in the moment we did bun a bunch of different versions based off ideas that she had, and I knew as soon as we did that one, I was like, that's the one that we're going to use, and it ended up being the one that we used. But it shows... 
I think a few things. First, it's very shows how organic she is in terms of, I think, actually fleshing through ideas that might not make sense to some people because keeping in mind there's a lot of people around you that think this is how it should be. They're acting practically for the most part. Right. Yeah. So it was very intuitive, I felt like. and then the, the, But that intuition and that freedom comes from her, I think, actually really committing you know, physically and mentally, especially to this character. And so, you know, I've lived with this movie and seen it so many times, and I'm always astounded by just the smallest things that she does, where I think this, to me, is the most natural acting. You're almost not aware that it, I, I actually feel like I'm not even watching acting because it's so pure. So I felt like, you know... I think those dream studies really worked out for you. They do. I like them. <laughs> I, I'm curious. Uh, I don't want to belabor a point on the dream studies, but when I think of your character on Fargo, which is a completely different kind of performance and character than this, I'm fascinated by the idea of you going through the same kind of process. Because a dream study, it's a very dreamlike film, so that kind that that would almost make sense. But do you do the same thing for a character like that? I did. I, another thing that's more easily um, to talk about that I, that I can explain explain it and you can pick it out was I remember on Fargo in one of my dreams and I'll, I'll write down to myself before I go to sleep and then write down whatever I wake up and one of my dreams there was a Scooby-Doo tape like a, a video cassette tape and you know I was talking to the lady I work with and I was like oh Peggy walks like a Scooby-Doo character like that's her little like you know how they have their little like walk so I just get pretty much everything and from my unconscious. I think it's the most pure way to work. And then by the time you get to set, you know the character better than anybody else. And I like that way of working because it feels more like you're doing it for yourself as opposed to anyone else. And at the end of the day, I feel like it's been a cathartic experience. Like there, there were scenes on this movie where I just, there was one scene where I kicked the door shut um, on my boyfriend and it's like, just the rage is starting to bubble. And I, did one take and I turned to Laura and I was just like, I can't do that again, Laura. I was like shaking like a leaf. It was just, it was a very quiet but very emotional set. And thank God we had each other as friends because we, you know, we could have little breaks where we could go off and, and just have our, you know, friendship moments where we could laugh. And, and you, know. you know, we shot, the whole film shot in camera except for one. There's only one scene where we had to do something in post there's little things that were done, of course, but in terms of the physicality required, because it's such an internal performance, but at the same time we were also having to shoot Kirsten and lifting her 100 feet in these redwoods and then drop her and lift her. And you know, shooting for the, those sequences lasted a few, I don't know how many days, like three or two days. Yeah, we did like three days. But it was pretty, I mean, in all honesty, she's. you talk about it better, what you experienced up there. But. Well, yeah, because no one gets to see these trees in the way that I got to see them. Like, to be strung up 100 feet in the air and see, like, it, it was one of the most incredible experiences that only, you know, someone cutting down the tree would experience, which probably is so heartbreaking for anyone who, like, has, you know, is, is, is experiencing these trees. But also there's, you know, scientists that go up and study the canopies. There's different ecosystems in these trees. They're so large. Or like little, um, I think some scientists describe it as, if you can imagine, that there's actual like cities and worlds. As you go up so high, it's so incredible. They've tried, they're now studying more and more that these entire worlds are, kind of exist in terms of an ecosystem the farther up you go. Which is, makes sense for this character who in many ways is trying to experience a new city or, or world. Did you see any similarities between your character in this and with like Melancholia, someone who's experiencing a bout of, of, depre of, of depression or, or loss? I didn't feel like she was depressed. That's not how I approached it. It felt very, very different to me. And I did this actually a month after doing Fargo. We worked together on, on this film. Um, but no, I think that yeah, I, 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 was, I would say, not to speak for no. you, but it's so interesting because Teresa's kind of, I always think about her as this character that's disoriented. So it's not about a depression. She's suffering grief and she's isolated from people. I don't think she's finding the way to communicate to other people, but she's communicating to the audience, which is really interesting. So, 
you know, in those moments where, you know, she looks at the glass vase or when she's rubbing her hand on the wall, all those things signify that she wants to stay connected to something, but she's just so unable to. And I, I guess we always approached it as, as, it wasn't depression, it's this grief you experience at extreme loss. And I've, we've had so many people say, this is exactly like it felt when I suddenly had a new world. Someone was lost in my life and I could not even understand day to day or time, like time's lost. You don't even have the chronological order of living anymore. So it's so interesting that it was more about uncovering this idea of isolation, which leads to her kind of disorientation. And I also think maybe, you know, one of the reasons that when you look at you know, a lot of the work that Kirsten's done over time, and there's so many you know, diverse roles, but certainly Melancholia, I think um, why that's such a great film, you know, one of the reasons is because it's diving into things, especially with the female body that most people don't get into. And I think one of the things that, where you could make a parallel with this film is that Teresa is, you know, I say she's just you know, a character and she can't represent every, everything or everyone, but she does... In, in her journey, in her psychological, I say, retreat inward, she undergoes a transformation and she calls really lar into large questions concerning, I think, the female body, its relationship to violence. I think the larger questions of humanity, you know, what is our impact in the world? How do we exist with, with each other? What do we leave behind? Um, so in a sense, I think both movies are trying to delve deeper into a female experience that's very complicated and one that doesn't necessarily say here's a happy ending or here's you know what I mean? Or here, no, yeah, yeah, right. I feel like ours has a kind of I pathetic melancholia had that great happy ending. People <laughs> <laughs> walked out of the theater <laughs> smiling. Together. I, I have no, a friend who's like No, it was like she It's gonna go down, we'll do it together. Love. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm curious, I mean, in, in, as you said, two movies that kind of dive deep into, into different aspects of womanhood that are rarely explored. What was the difference for you as an actress in having two women direct that, that, that character versus having a male direct a character like that or a story like that? I don't think you could tell this story through a, through a male's eyes, a, a male director's eyes. This is very much comes from Laura and Kate. Absolutely. You know, in a weird way, like I would never, I didn't think about, in truth, in the writing process, I never thought that once when we were writing it, you know, we were just writing this story. But the first day of shooting, I remember saying to Laura, oh yeah, like I didn't even realize some of the stuff that we were exploring. It re really revealed it to, my, to us as we were shooting it. Even I feel like how we, the idea of domestic space, just think over and over, like if you carefully go through the film, there's just a lot of things that were you know, calling into question or thinking about. And um, mostly for me, it was, and Laura, would, we would say to each other, just to watch a woman think on film. Yep. And I'll, I kind of started to think when I would watch it later, it's so interesting to see a female body on camera with such kind eyes watching it rather than, I never felt like we were exploiting Teresa or Kirsten. I just felt like, oh, this is a person that we're caring about. And that's just a different way of looking at her, even through a camera lens. Um, so I think our friendship allowed that. We were just, it's kind of a celebration of her performance. And so we kind of are able to handle the subject matter in a delicate way, because um, it's more about the emotion of it rather than any um, objectification. The only objectification that happens is, you know, when Keith is acting crazy a few times in the film and saying things that are problematic. <laughs> but we all recognize that. But we still love we Keith. We still love so Keith. Keith. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'm curious, you know, you, you said that there's a lot of stream of consciousness in regards to the filmmaking process, and you talked about dreams, and, and, and I had said the words practical in regards to other people that are around you when you're making a movie, because most of the people, the technicians that you have to hire to get a film made are very used to working. They, they want to make the day. Basically, what was it like? I mean, what kind of collaborators well, did you surround I, yourself with? I have with? to say one thing. I'm sorry. Cause yeah. <laughs> I mean, basically on our film set, there's a mo well, there's a moment in it where there's like uh, in her refrigerator, these moths flew in and landed on this cake. 
And on our version of the, uh, you know, on our film, it was like everything had to stop because we didn't plan it. And we, we were like, we need to go shoot those moths. But for us, it was like the sensitivity for us was that we always thought nature always invades her, her world. So when something like that happened organically, we wanted to capture it. So, I mean, you set, I mean, listen, it's our first film, but I think you set the tone of how you create with the people that you create with. And hopefully they become your partners in artistic kind of process. And I think on our film set, we had a bunch of, like, amazing people that came together and really believed, you know, interestingly enough, everyone believed in trying to get her story to come to life on screen. That's great. That's great. So there was no one on set being like, oh, come on, we're doing a dream thing again here? Like, no. Well, they well, didn't tell us, so hopefully. Uh, <laughs> they were scared. You know what was funny yeah. that I thought was really bold and also very beautiful? Like the, <laughs> like the soap opera. Oh, just said bold, bold and beautiful. And beautiful. <laughs> just <laughs> ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> but... Lauren Kay, I remember towards the end of the movie, I'm running through the forest, I'm spinning, and I'm like yeah. going out of focus and stuff. And I remember the focus pillar was okay. like, I can't go out of focus. Like, it was so against her nature. She was just like, I do can't it. do it. And they're like, do it. Her. do it, do it, do it. Well, we didn't, you know, it was interesting because for us, we thought part of what we wanted to do in the film is create this dream state. So the idea is that it would become like a watercolor. We would make things soft and kind of smear things. A lot of the film shot through reflections. Um, but... So we wanted to pull out of focus, but do it in camera. And I think for most people, it would be like, get your principal footage. If you want to do something like that, do it later in post, yeah. because you're risking not having what you need. So it was like a really interesting, Kirsten overheard a few times, I'm sure, in that. Like, well, I'm like screaming, and pull out, and screaming. Like, why are you pulling get out of focus? Out of <laughs> But it's more emotional. It in is. The moment, in the moment, it's camera, more emotional. Yeah, the, even the our title poster. Sequence, it's, yeah. it's, it's in camera. Our, our poster, well, actually, I took that photo, but um, the other posters are um, shots from the film that are double exposures made with film. So everything, I feel like the, the emotion you put on an image carries through, mm -hmm. and you can tell that there's something different about it. There's a, hand, a human hand there. Absolutely. It's a it's an absolutely beautiful film, you guys. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations you. on another wonderful you. performance and on your Thank first you. film. How can people see Woodshock? Um, on the 22nd <laughs> yeah. in New like, York and L.A., that. and that'll go wider the week after if you guys all go see it. Let's call spade a spade yeah, here. Let's call I just want to say, also, she's been waiting to make that announcement. Kirsten I know, got to I do, do it, it earlier I said, for another interview. It. So I noticed she jumped right in. <laughs> To be honest, it's actually my job to do it, but I force everybody else oh, really? to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're so kicking much, you guys. out of your chair and we're taking over. Congratulations. Thanks so much, guys. Thank Give you. a round of applause. Thanks for Thank coming. You.